In this video, I'm going to show you the four main causes of flat feet according to the scientific literature. I'll also provide recommendations on how to overcome each of these issues. Let's get this video started. A well-functioning foot and foot arch is able to adapt to differing surfaces, behave as a shock absorber, and also stiffen up to propel the body forward during the push-off phase of each step. The muscle, plantar fascia, ligaments, and tendons in the feet all form a robust base in the form of an arch in which all this can occur. We could therefore think of the foot arch as a foundational pillar of the body. However, an arch that is weak and unable to stiffen properly under the load of one's body weight during movement will just collapse under those forces, making the whole system less efficient, thus hurting performance. Therefore, because the foot is the most distal part of the body and the only contact point one has with the ground during the gait cycle, even minor changes in the foot arch position could have major effects on the balance and posture of the body. In these images, you can see the effects of having a collapsed arch on the other joints in the body compared to when one has a healthy arch. These changes occur due to the functional relationship between the feet and the other body parts upstream of them. The ability of these parts of the kinetic chain to transmit forces and influence motion between themselves might hold the clues to various injuries along this chain. Now, before moving to the crux of this video, I'll first want to help answer a question that I'm sure many of you are asking. Namely, what are flat feet and do I have them? Scientifically, fat feet are characterized by hind foot valgus, forefoot abduction, and a decrease in the height of the medial longitudinal arch. In more simple and practical terms, looking at your heel from behind, one should see a neutral alignment. Any collapsing inwards is a sign of flat feet. From the top view, we should see neutral alignment running from the midfoot through the big toe. Any misalignment could be a strong indicator of fallen arches. Finally, from the side, strong arches will present themselves with a prominent dome-shaped foot curve. If there is little indication of such a shape, then one has a collapsed or flattened arch. Identifying one or more of these three indicators in the foot would suggest that the arch is weak and inactive. Now, if you do happen to have fallen arches, you're not alone. Flat feet have been found to be five times more common than high arches. It is the most prevalent foot problem in the US. Overall, it is estimated that roughly 40% of Americans suffer from foot problems. These statistics are alarming, especially since having nice, strong arches is essential to optimal athletic performance and injury prevention. Fortunately, through our extensive research and experience, my team and I have identified four of the most significant reasons for which people develop flat feet and how these issues can be rectified. Let's run through them. The first is wearing the wrong shoes. Shoes have changed a lot over the years. They started off as a pure utility wear, meant to keep the feet warm in extreme cold and protect them from harsh terrain. Nowadays, footwear is part of a trillion dollar fashion industry in which the emphasis is placed on the aesthetics more than utility. Unfortunately, the shift on the way we utilize and design our footwear has had some repercussions for the health of our feet. For example, a study done on the native Mexican Tarahumara tribe, who mostly wear barefoot sandals, found that they were 23 times less likely to have flat feet than urban Americans who predominantly wear conventional footwear. Another study, this time on 2,300 children, found that children who were predominantly barefoot were three times less likely to have flat feet than children who wore shoes. The study also showed that wearing shoes before the age of six was detrimental to the development of children's feet and arches. You can learn more about why traditional footwear is bad for the feet through some of our videos linked down below. So, to overcome this issue, one can spend as much time barefoot as possible. Personally, I don't wear shoes around the house. The rest of the time, I wear barefoot shoes, which are designed to mimic being barefoot while still protecting one's feet from harsh conditions. You can find all our barefoot shoe reviews linked down below. Moving on. The second cause of flat feet is weak intrinsic foot muscles. Each foot is controlled by 13 extrinsic and 21 intrinsic muscles. If these muscles are weak or unresponsive, then the integrity of the foot arch is lost, which usually results in a collapsed arch. Large deformities or the arches collapsing in every step puts a huge strain on the passive tissues, such as plantar fascia, 
which is why plantar fasciitis has been associated with this issue. To show just how important the muscles in the feet are for maintaining a foot arch, a study was conducted in which the researchers paralyzed the foot muscles via anesthesia. The results showed a 50% average reduction in arch height among their participants. Therefore, strengthening the foot muscles must become a priority when trying to reverse flat feet. Of all these muscles in and around the foot, the abductor hallucis, abductor digiti minimi, and the tibialis posterior have been found to play a key role in stabilizing the arch. These are some of the specific muscles we target in our Strong Feet, Strong Foundation program. The links can be found down below. Studies utilizing foot strengthening programs such as ours have been found to significantly improve foot function and reduce the presence of flat feet. Okay, so the third factor we're going to look at when trying to fix flat feet is tight calves and restricted ankles. To be clear, a well-functioning foot arch is dynamic. It is capable of flattening upon impact after which it stiffens during the propulsion and toe or phase of the gait cycle. In this way, our foot arch is capable of functioning as a spring, which has been found to conserve 17% of our energy while running. Now, as I've mentioned earlier, the foot muscles help to stabilize and form the arch. On the other hand, the calves together with Achilles tendon contract to exert opposing forces on the feet in order to precipitate their spring-like effect. However, for the system to work efficiently, the foot arch strength must match that of the calves and ankle musculature. Otherwise, the calves will overpower the foot, resulting in excessive flattening of the arch. So, while foot strengthening exercises can be very helpful in trying to improve the balance between the opposing forces, we also need to ensure that the calves and ankles are not overly tight either. One of the major issues with traditional shoes is the raised heels, which forces the feet into a slightly plantar flexed position, whereby the calves have to remain in a constant shortened state. Over time, this produces chronically tight calves and tight ankles, which then puts too much strain on the feet and makes it difficult to hold an arch. Now, there are two ways to go about improving ankle mobility and reducing tightness in the calves. The first step is to avoid wearing shoes with a raised heel. Zero drop, barefoot style shoes, for example, keep the feet in a level position at all times, which can really help to rectify tightness in the ankles. The second step is to work with various ankle mobility drills and stretches to restore the full range of motion in these joints. We also include these drills in our Strong Feet, Strong Foundation program. All right, so the fourth and final factor we're going to look at is weak glutes or external rotators. As explained earlier, the body is an integrated system. So dysfunctional in one area has a consequence for other areas along the kinetic chain. The gluteal muscles are no different. Because they are external rotators of the upper limbs, when the glutes don't function properly, the thigh bone rotates internally, which causes the knee to dive inwards, which then sends the foot into overpronation and collapses the arch. As you can see, what seems to be two unrelated parts of the body in isolation are, in fact, both part of a tightly integrated kinetic chain and drastically affect one another. It is for this reason that studies have found that gluteal strengthening exercises in combination with foot strengthening exercises is far better at correcting a shallow medial longitudinal arch than foot strengthening exercises alone. Therefore, it is absolutely critical to include glute strengthening exercises in your regime when you're trying to fix flat feet. Okay, so in conclusion, having flat feet is a very common issue, which not only affects one's athletic performance, but can also increase one's risk of developing injuries. After all, it's the only contact we have with the ground in the majority of our athletic activities. However, by addressing the four areas we presented in this video, one can significantly improve the strength of one's foot arches. For those who are serious about building strong feet, don't forget to check out our Strong Feet, Strong Foundation program through the links below. Also bear in mind that because the research surrounding this topic is always evolving and our knowledge is expanding, by purchasing this program, you'll not only receive the current version of the product, but you'll also get the updates we make to the program in the future. Well, that's it from us today. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up because it really helps out the channel. Anyways, thanks for watching. Join us again next time for more health science made simple. Cheers.